Hi, I'm Beth from Restyle Pieces Boutique. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to take this brown buffet from dark and dreary, beautiful details, but dark and dreary to clean, classic, light, and beautiful. So if you want to watch this makeover, stay tuned. As with all my makeovers, I start by taking off the hardware first. I love this hardware on this piece. It has beautiful, vintage looking, detailed hardware, just like all the details on the piece. But in order to clean it well, I feel like I need to take off the hardware. So that's what I'm doing here. Don't fall into the trap of losing your hardware. I always keep them in a little container. On the bottom of these pieces, uh, the latches that held the doors closed, one of them was missing and the other one wasn't working that well. So I'm just popping those out here and I'm going to replace them with magnets. And now it's time to clean. I'm taking my Pure Power from Farmhouse Paint and I'm just giving it a good cleaning with a brush and with the cleaner and a rag. And I like to use the brush in those detailed places, especially this degreases, de-waxes and cleans the surface properly so my paint will stick. Here I'm using two furniture dollies with a piece of plywood on the top of each one. I like to place the plywood on there and I use one on one side of the piece underneath this piece and the other on the other side of the piece. And I also need help with flipping it. So I made my husband put his slippers on. He's not real thrilled about you seeing his slippers on the video, but he'll get over it. And I can turn it on its back to get it clean. Always clean the underside because that's where those little spider webs and little cobwebs that you don't know are there, don't pay attention to, that's where they hide out. And here I'm just taking some wood glue because this trim piece at the bottom of one of the cabinets was loose. So I'm going to glue it well and clamp it. You can see me flinch sometimes when I put these clamps on because I don't want them too tight because if you get them too tight, you run the risk of cracking your piece of wood that you have the clamp on. So I'm always a little careful. Just to secure it a little more, I'm going to use my staple gun. Here I'm making sure the staples will go from the top of that piece into the detail piece so that it's another way to ensure that that detail piece stays on well.
when I took the pieces off of the door and the bottom of this trim piece, um, it left a little hole. So I'm using this sculpt wood putty. It comes in A and B parts, just like quick wood. It's a little differently. It's a lot more malleable and smoother. And I'm just filling in those places on the bottom of the cabinet door and on the bottom of the frame. Here you can see that my runner is broken and I am measuring carefully so that I can replace the runner. I took off the runner and I'm just gonna buy a piece of wood and cut it to size. And now it's time to sand down the top. So I'm using my Festool Orbital Sander and I'm starting with, I believe I started with 80 grit here to get the main finish off. And then I go through my grits from 80 to 120 to 180 to 220. In between, you can see I brush off all of the dust. That is really important. You don't want a bunch of dust clogging up your sandpaper on your duster. And then I use my tack cloth to clean it out as well. And here I decided to go ahead and try to scuff sand some of the piece, uh, the drawers and the parts of the piece that I could get to at that moment. I also felt like the outsides of the drawers needed some sanding down. They just needed a little refresh. Here I'm taping off the doors where the cabinets are so that I can paint, leave the doors on, and not have any overspray from my paint sprayer go inside the cabinet. So I start with my big frog tape and then I use my painter's tape with the, with the uh, plastic that's attached to it to finish up the job. Next, I'm using my painter's tape with plastic to cover up the drawers. Because these drawers are flush with the frame, I like to cover them up with plastic, go ahead and put them in my piece, and spray with my drawers in. My favorite part is when I get to stain the legs on this beautiful piece. So I used Verithane Dark Walnut Gel Stain. I applied the gel stain, wiped it down, and then it'll be ready for top coat. I also wanted to use my premium wood filler to fill some gashes and dings in the piece. And you can see it had quite a few. And here I am just covering up the back because I don't want overspray on the back of my piece, but I wanted to leave a little frame that is painted around the edge of the back. As you can see here, I use delicate purple tape so I don't mess up my uh, stain job on the legs. Then I use aluminum foil and frog tape and make sure I cover that tape those legs up very well so that they do not get any paint on them when I spray. And here I'm just sanding down those spots where I fixed the dents and dings and wiping it back. Ready to prime. I'm so happy to get to this point. There were so many repairs and things to do on this piece. I am using Kills Restoration Primer. I did add a little bit of water and I ran it through a paint strainers to make sure it's nice and smooth. So here I am testing it on the cardboard. You saw that a moment ago, and I'm doing the first coat of primer. It's going on smoothly, and I can't wait to get the color on after this. Light colored primer always lets you find your imperfections. So I filled those again with a different colored wood filler so I could see where they are and I it would be easier to sand them down. Next I'm using quick wood to repair the top of this detail. It had some gouges in the back and wasn't all the way perfect so I just used those two that two-part putty mixed it together and filled those spots. I'm also filling some little spots up here on the detail on the top. 
While that dries, I'm taking my caulk and I'm just caulking some of these spaces that I don't like, the seams. Um, you can see the seam in between the wood and the detail. And I just think it will look better if I use some caulk to give it a more finished look. After that wood filler dries completely, I'm sanding down those spots so that it can be smooth. Some of them showed a little bit more um, texture, so I use this two-in-one automotive, automotive primer to fill those spots. Now it's time to paint. I'm so excited. Hybrid Beige from Farmhouse Evolution Paint is my favorite color so far that I've used from that line. So I do the same process. I add a little water, I strain my paint, and I'm ready to go. If you're enjoying my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I love to hear what people think and interact with you and you will get notified when new videos come out. Remember that piece that I had to fix? I sanded it off smoothly and painted it and you would never know it's there. This is my favorite part, peeling off all of the tape and the plastic and it's just such a rewarding thing to do. Time to clean up the hardware in vinegar and water and then I will be top coating. Those legs that I stained earlier, I unwrapped them and now it's time to give them a beautiful sheen. Once the hardware's clean, I attach that back to the piece and then it's time to give the drawers a little touch of extra love. I love putting drawer liners in my drawers. They just coordinate so beautifully with the colors that I paint the piece in and it's just a little added extra beautiful touch. My final step, It's the Bomb by Farmhouse Paint. It is a wood conditioner and wood polish. I apply that to the wood that needs nourished and moisturizes and protected and to the underside of the runners and inside the runners of the piece. It gives it a fresh, clean scent and makes everything work smoothly. And here is the final result. Beautiful, light with those dark walnut legs. If it doesn't sell quickly, I may just keep this piece because I love it. Thanks for joining me for this makeover today. I really appreciate you being here. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. It helps me grow and it helps me continue to be able to bring you videos such as these makeovers. So I appreciate it. Join me next time and I'll see you later.